Okay, as of the 1st September 2021, standard unleaded fuel for vehicles and garden machinery will contain 10% ethanol. In this video, I'm going to talk you through why the change, what is ethanol, what the possible problems are, what the signs are that you already have a problem, what you can do about it, what alternatives are available to you, and what the future holds. I'm Nick, let's get started. Why the change? The UK government has legislated for the introduction of E10 fuel to reduce CO2 emissions by approximately 750,000 tonnes a year. That's the equivalent of 350,000 cars being taken off the road. This is part of the government's push to reach carbon neutral by 2050. And E10 fuel uses a higher percentage of biofuels. What is ethanol? Ethanol is an alcohol-based fuel Fermentation of certain plants like sugarcane and grains, plus the byproducts, are used. Ethanol is said to be partially, atmospherically, carbon neutral. Reportedly, the plants used to make this biofuel absorbs more CO2 during its growth than will be released into the air by its production and combustion. Also, it's a great oxygenate, which means that it's cleaner burning. What the problems are? E10 fuel produces more power, but has less fuel efficiency than E5 fuel. This will affect professional gardeners more than domestic users. Ethanol has 33% less energy than pure unleaded, and so fuel economy will drop by about 3%. But the real problems can be far more significant, which is water contamination and fuel separation. Ethanol is hygroscopic, which basically means it attracts and absorbs any moisture in the air even inside the fuel tank. The problem is with ethanol, that it can only hold so much water. Once it reaches its maximum, something called phase separation occurs. This is where the ethanol and the water separate from the fuel. The fuel is lighter than either the water or the ethanol, so it sits on top of this layer. The ethanol water mix is highly corrosive, and it's this mix that the fuel pumps drag through first. Uh, this is what you might expect to happen in a four-stroke engine, like a lawnmower. This phase separation can happen within weeks of fresh fuel being added to the tank. Now, two-stroke engines can suffer an even higher level of damage. As we know, two-stroke engines run on a fuel oil mix as they don't or can't have a specific lubrication system. If the same thing happens here, the water that's created in the mix with the oil can create a heterogeneous mix, which results in the oil not bonding to the metal surfaces and therefore no lubrication, which means your engine could rust, rub and wear. Signs that you may already have a problem. Engine not starting, hunting or irregular RPM, stalling, engine stopping after starting, lack of power, poor fuel efficiency. The last one being obviously difficult to measure. What can you do about it? Very simply, use the freshest fuels you can. Only buy what you need when you need it and top up as and when. Don't leave fuel in your tank unused for extended periods of time, for example, over the winter period. If you found any information here useful or helpful, please give this video a like to share it to other people. A lot of research went into this video and there's still a lot more information to come. What are the alternatives? High octane or 97, 99% octane fuel or E5 fuel is still available. The Petrol Retailers Association has confirmed that E5 fuel will be available for the next five years from the 1st of September, 2021. But this is only gonna be available as the super grade fuel. So expect to pay 15p more per litre. This will be reviewed in five years time. Use a fuel stabiliser. Whether you're using E10 or E5 fuel, E5 still has 5% ethanol in it. A fuel stabiliser will help you protect your engine. It doesn't remove the ethanol, but they do contain corrosion inhibitors to form a protective barrier on metal parts, detergent to prevent gum and varnish buildup, and metal deactivators to stop chemical reactions from dissolved metals in the fuel. I've included a link in the description of 10 fuel additives for you to have a look at. Use an alkylate fuel. Alkylate is a synthetically produced petrol component. It's one of the cleanest petroleum products available. It also has the longest shelf life compared to the normal pump products. E10 can be good for up to one month, E5 up to three months, and alkylate fuel up to five years. There are many advantages to this type of fuel, not the least of which is up to 99% reduction in hydrocarbon emissions. There are a number of companies that produce this kind of fuel, one of the largest being Aspen. Aspen 4 is designed for four-stroke engines and Aspen 2 for two-stroke. 
This also has the added benefit of being pre-mixed, so there's no need for you to buy separate two-stroke oil. Battery or corded tools. I won't talk about corded tools here. They have their place. Some people like them, some people don't, but only you know if they'll be of any use to you. But with uh, battery tools, I ran a poll on one of my local Facebook gardeners groups, and there was a, a three-way split that I broke it down to, which was gardeners that would go back to petrol from battery tools, or they were undecided at 9%. 41% of gardeners who were either in between using petrol and battery tools or had battery tools as their main tools to use in the garden with petrol backups, that was 41%. And those that had a full battery tool arsenal and would never go back to petrol tools, that was 50%. There are now many companies that uh, produce battery powered garden machinery. Technology has come a long way year on year. I'm due to replace my current smart fit hedge trimmer and I'm likely to go down the battery route for a number of reasons. Problems with fuel being one of them, but also ease of use, lighter, quieter, no pull strings, no fumes, no petrol fill ups, get less tired using the tool, you get more done and a couple of batteries should last you all day. Lawn mowers need a bit more development for now, but this is a viable, if reasonably expensive option. E15, E85 and the future. Do you remember the 15th of March 2006? That was the day Morrison's opened up the UK's first bioethanol E85 pumps. This was to coincide with the launch of Saab's 9-5. However, this was withdrawn in 2010 due to the lack of demand, along with their B30 biodiesel. But what about E15? Could that be coming to the UK and give us even more issues than we have with E10? There's nothing available online currently that tells me when or even if E15 will be coming to the UK. As far as I can tell, it's illegal to sell it here in the UK, but other countries are using it and some of them for a long time. With the production ban on vehicles, on petrol vehicles coming in in 2030 in the UK, hybrids by 2035 and diesels by 2040, there may not be enough time to introduce E15 here in the UK. It's being used extensively in the US, Finland, France and Germany. In fact, the Finns have had E10 since 2011, and even back in 2015, it had a market share of 63%. Unfortunately, I don't have any more uh, up-to-date information on that, and the usage figures are based on vehicles, not garden machinery. That was unavailable. Conclusions. E10 is here to stay. There are a few options available to you, and the best option will be different for everyone based on your personal circumstances. I'd love to hear from everyone in the comments your thoughts on this video and its content and whether or not it's helped you with your existing tools or any future purchases. Like I said, by next spring, I will need to buy a new hedge trimmer. And at this point, based on this research, I can pretty much guarantee it's going to be a battery unit. When E10 came in in uh, the beginning of September, I immediately moved over to uh, buying E5 fuel with the higher octane values. And after having done this research, I'll be buying a stock of fuel stabilizer I go through about 30 litres of fuel every month, so I can only imagine what kind of damage is going on. All of the links for the research that I've done are included in the description, along with a list of the E10 fuel stabilisers that you can get, and also a link to a Fox Business video regarding E15 fuel. It took about a month to get all this information together, and as I mentioned before, lots of videos and an awful lot of documentation. So I really hope you have enjoyed this video and it's been informative and useful for you. So if you'd like to see any more videos like this or any of my other content, please consider subscribing. Thank you and I hope to see you in the next one. Cheers.